So I was in the shower, I was cleaning my ass and making all shirts all sparkly, spanking clean. I'm not the funny one, I'm the pretty one. Cock shots. <laughs> <laughs> I just checked myself out. Beatles, music, wine, and then loop up and get on top. The glory hole is like a, a like dick theater of a magic trick. Which means your pants had better come off. Mama needs playtime. I do that. Uh, uh, we're not sluts. We just love love. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mrs. Atom. And this is Mr. Atom. Welcome back to another episode of By the By. Yep. Um, we got some exciting stuff coming up. Yeah. Don't we? Yes, we do. What do we have coming up? So November 24th, we have the fourth Pendulum Party at our secret spot. Pendulum Party, part four. Yes. This time it's personal. Yes. So we're going to be hosting that. And again, it's, it's a time where bisexual, bi-curious, experimental men, women, anyone can come along. If you're just curious as to what happens, if you are well aware and want to participate. Or just want to watch. Or just want to watch. That's absolutely okay, too. So, yeah, come on out to our secret spot. It'll be an awesome time, and we'll have the glory hole back up. You and that glory hole. I love I it. I know. I love the um, glory hole. I heard through the grapevine that the gentleman said that he wants to spend time in on the receiving end in the glory hole oh. this time. So he will definitely be there. All right. And he wants to be in the glory hole, which is That's exciting. glorious. Yes. Maybe I'll get in there with him. Ooh. Ooh. But, but then you might get distracted, and that could be a problem for everyone on the outside. <laughs> Oi, get out of the glory hole. Um, yeah, so that'll be fun. That's exciting. Mm-hmm. And then before that, on the 23rd... No, it's 24th as well. Ah, shit, I don't even know what day it is. On the 24th, we're also having a um, Sex Ed in the City class on blowjob and cock massage. Yes. yes. That's a fun one. And then before that, if you're listening to this uh, as it comes out this coming weekend, we will be at Sexpo in Melbourne. That's true, yeah. Yeah, so we'll be there on the 18th, 19th, and 20th. Nope, 17th, 18th, 19th. Again, don't know days, nor do I know numbers. Um, public schooling in the southeast of the U.S. So, yeah. We're there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, yeah. we will be at Sexpo. Um, we'll be doing, uh, in the share room, we'll be giving a presentation mm-hmm. on, it's, well, each day it's the same thing. On Friday at 4 p.m., Saturday at 4 p.m., and Sunday at 6 p.m., uh, we're doing Swinging 101 and the Art of Flirting. Yes. So, if you want to come out and say hi to us, or if you're out there, please say hi to us. Uh, we like attention. And we'll be wandering around uh, both before and after the class, so let us know if you're there. Yeah, we'll either be in our, we'll, we've already got it planned, we'll either be in our Our Secret Spot t-shirts, <laughs> which FYI, our, our Secret Spot now has t-shirts. And they're pretty awesome. They're fucking amazing. Yeah. You'll see them, we'll post them on Twitter here shortly. Um, or we'll be in our uh, podcasting, our own podcasting brand. I mean, why should I mention us first? Uh, We'll be in our own uh, by the by t-shirts, or we'll be in our Rule Thirty Four shirts. Yeah. Which leads me to the what has happened this week. All right. Why don't you tell it, buddy? Well, because you're the mouth. <laughs> on on uh, Wednesday this past week, we did Rule Thirty Four Club. Um, if you don't know what Rule Thirty Four <coughs> is, it's a internet trope where uh, if you can imagine it or it exists, there is porn related to it. Um, and so this is a sort of a burlesque style show where people sing, dance, burlesque, strip, talk, rap, sing, um, or just get up there and talk. Or I'm sorry, I already said that. Or just get up there and, and mime. Yeah. Um, sexy stuff. And we did one. Ours was on objectification. Our theme for the, for the night was objectification. And so... We did a uh, little burlesque. It was something I'd always wanted to do before I turned 40, uh-huh. was to strip in on stage in front of people. <laughs> uh, and so I did. And uh, all in all, I think I, I enjoyed it. Hopefully the audience did too. Yeah, it was fun. It was good. Uh, a few of our listeners were there, and we really, yeah. really appreciate them coming out. I have no idea what it looked like from the other side. I don't but, either. You know, whatever. I hear tell that there might be video of it. Okay. Um, so if I get some video of it, I might post a snippet to Twitter. Okay. If I'm not too embarrassed. <laughs> if I am, then I won't. So, yes. 
Um, then all, you then the only people who saw it were the hundred people that were in the room that night. Yes, that's right. One time only. Yeah. One opportunity. So yeah, that was it. Was a great experience. We really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Um, what else? Do we have anything else that is new and exciting? And I've been mentally broken <laughs> lately. Um, so, uh, what are we talking about tonight? So tonight's topic, uh, we posted a Twitter poll recently. That's right. Yes, where we asked people what they wanted to hear about or more about. And the options that we put up were pegging, dirty talk, first time at a club, and other. Yes. And uh, the one that got the most votes was first time at a club. By a smidge, by 2%. So the breakdown ended up being first time at club advice, 42%, pegging, 40%, dirty talk, 18%. Yeah. So. And then we had one uh, write in. One write in. That was more MMF and sauna stories. Yes. Which um, I'm. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to do more research. I mean, geez, just going to have to, just going to have to do some more research uh, on that. Um, good news for those people who want more MMF and sauna stories. Um, like we said, we're going to Melbourne <laughs> this weekend. I will be at the subway at least one night, mm-hmm. if not two. I may try Wet and Wild as well, so we'll see. Wet on Wellington. Whatever. See, she knows. <laughs> I don't even fucking know. I just show up there and I'm like, hey. <laughs> hey, boys. Yeah, so it's going to be awesome. Yeah. All right, so. All right, so we're going to talk about first time at a club since that was the front runner. Yes, first time club ex- advice. Okay, first time club advice. There we go. Um, so for me, I think that advice on going to a club the first time, um, I think it starts before you ever make it to the club. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that what you what you really need to do before you ever even consider leaving for the club is have a nice long sit down with your partner Mm -hmm. yeah I would agree and in that sit down I would suggest talking about uh, what is your motivation for going first of all and and it's interesting because we've met a lot of people recently who are going to the club for the first time and it's interesting to hear their reasons because it's a whole variety it's anything from You know, we've been married for a long time, and we want to spice things up, check out something different. Um, There's, you know, the fact there are some couples that have been together for a very short period of time, but again, they want something more, they want something different. There are those who have, you know, been to strip clubs together, but, I mean, what's the next step from there is to go to a swinging club together. And there are those who just want to see what it's like. They have no real intention, initially anyway, of of playing but they're just curious as to what is swinging and what does it look like and what kinds of people go and so they just go and check it out for themselves so I would say sit down with your partner and talk about the reasons why you want to go and what you expect to gain from that night yeah and you know another uh, couple that we've spoken to recently were both exhibitionists and voyeurs. Yeah. And so they had no desire to swap partners. What they wanted to do was basically have sex in a room and have people watch them and watch other people having sex in that same room. Absolutely. Um, and it, I think they were very happy. And that's, yeah. I think that's a great kind of point is that um, going to a club doesn't have to be about partner swapping. No. Um, it can be about a lot of different things. And everybody who goes in, you know, to, to quote a, a stupid book, everybody's parachute is a different color. And whatever turns you on is going to be completely different yeah. um, from maybe what turns other people on. And it could be even that, you know, if you're used to, depending on, on how your, your daily life is, some people like to go just to be with like-minded people who are sexually open and don't have to filter themselves. They may just go and have a conversation and talk to people and dress sexy and be in that environment. But again, may, they may never swap partners with somebody else. Right, exactly. So it just depends on what you're looking for. So, you know, I think you're right. You sit down with your partner and, um, you know, oftentimes it, it seems to be that the, it's the guy's idea. Um, just from the people we've talked to, often, spoken to, yeah. uh, and are talking to, it's it's the guy's idea. Um, either the couples have watched porn together, and then it's like, well, what would you feel about going to a, a swingers mm-hmm. club? Um, but like we've said before, whoever's idea it is and comes up with it, you've dealt with this in your head for a long time. 
you've thought about it, you've thought about the ramifications, you've thought it, you've probably thought it through, you've imagined uh, what it's going to look like. Give your partner that chance to do the same. Okay. Don't bring it up, and if they react anti the way you would hope they would react, don't immediately attack back. Don't mm-hmm. see their response as an attack. Listen to their response. Let them have some time to digest it and, and think about what maybe what they might want to get out of it. Um, you might be lucky and you mentioned, hey, let's go to a swingers club or hey, how do you feel about going to a swingers club? And your partner instantly be like, oh my God, that's I've been thinking about that too. Um, or they may be sort of taken aback and, yeah. and need a few minutes to days to weeks um, to really think about it and, and come to terms with what it what it means for them. And no matter what the outcome is, I would definitely say that, you know, pay attention to your partner and be completely open and honest with them. And if they have any hesitations or questions or anything like that, you know, be sure to address them. Don't ignore any signs from your partner of distress or insecurity or anything like that. Make sure that you address any issues that they have up front, if they do. Um, and you know if they're on board then great that makes it easy absolutely um you know because it's very easy for if you bring it up to your partner for them to instantly think that there's something wrong with them yeah um or the relationship or the relationship and we're we're not going to say that there's not something wrong with the relationship or them but But that doesn't have to be the case but that doesn't have to be the case and and many of the newbies that we've met in the past six months they are, at least on the surface, um, what we can see, they seem very connected, they seem very well, mm-hmm. they're communicating well, and they're really into each other. Yeah, and, and I would say that most of them as well seem very excited to explore and check it out. And so we have no idea you know, how much discussion and, and work went into it before they made it there, but by the time they've made it to their first night, most of them are like super excited and just want to see what it's like and, and what there is. I often think about, you know, when talking about newbies, um, the perfect example is uh, a young couple that we met a f- about six months ago or so, who, when we first met them at the club, um, they after sitting down and speaking to him for a bit, they had researched it, they had looked it up online, they had read books, they had discussed it for quite a while before ever getting to the club. Yeah. So when they got there, they were 100% ready for whatever was thrown at them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, I think, is great. Uh, I, that was their first, we met them, fortunately, on their first club experience. Yep. Um, and it was really kind of a lot of fun to see this I'm not going to say relationship, but sort of a relationship. It's a rela- because it's the relationship between them and the club to watch that yeah. flourish and bloom and grow. And it was such a cool experience to see that. Yeah. Um, and since since then, we've gotten to play with them mm-hmm. more and more, both at the club and not. And to see how they change now at the club. You know, now when they go to the club, they're so relaxed. And but that first night, there was a little bit of palpable Nerves. nervousness, yeah. which is completely to be expected. But now they walk in and it's just like they fucking own that place. Like, <laughs> this is home now. <laughs> it's really cute. Um, but back to that that communication. I, I really, I don't think we can stress that enough. You yeah. Talk to your partner, you, you know, maybe write a list of things out that you, that way you can keep your thoughts sort of mm-hmm. on track. Because your partner may not react the way you hope they react and you want to make sure that your your case your argument is strong because it's not about you, the last thing you want to do is destroy your relationship what you're trying to do is build it which then goes to that second um second sort of trope that we always stand by which is um swinging in general is a magnifying glass and if you have any cracks or, or, or imperfections in your relationship, it's going to turn them into faults and crevices. Whereas if you start with strength and a strong connection, it's going to do nothing but magnify that as well. Mm-hmm. And you're going to become this fortress of, of romantitude. I don't think that's a word. It is now. I said it. Okay. Um, now, I think sure. of, now I think of Archer where she goes, <laughs> she goes, I think that word's made up. Aren't they all? <laughs> <laughs> That was that was your mind being blown. Mind blown. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah, after the initial discussion or multiple discussions with your partner about going and so you've decided, okay, we're going to do this, then sit down and have yet another discussion on, on boundaries and things, you know, starting out, and this will change. We've talked about rules and boundaries many, many times um, and we'll continue to because it's very important and they will change over time, but, you know, sit down and have a discussion as to you know, the first time we go, what is acceptable and what's not acceptable? And that goes along with what you're expecting out of the night. You know, the couple that that goes that they're just, they're exhibitionists and they're voyeurs, they're not going to swap with partners, you know, they're not going to play with other people. All they want to do is go and have sex with each other and have sex in front of other people and so, and watch other people. But, so their rules may be different than a couple who's willing to soft swap. And, you know, a couple who's like, okay, well, maybe, and maybe you want to, you know, swap partners first time. It doesn't matter. Whatever works for you and your partner, but have a discussion to make sure that you're on the same page as to what's acceptable and what's not. And what happens if you want to go a little further once you get there, but before you go that extra step, like make sure that you're okay taking your partner aside and saying, hey, we need to talk for a moment. Yeah. So I think that, that you're, you're spot on. That's important. So. We, we've sort of rambled on and on uh, a bit about first-time club advice, and I don't know if uh, this is, feels to me a bit more swinging 101, um, yeah. but so if we, let's jump to the club, let's say, let's assume uh, that the couple has taken all of our advice, they're communicating well, they know what they're wanting, they know what they're going to do, they have their safe ins and their safe outs, mm-hmm. um, and they're going to a club. When do you go for the first time? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, that's a, I wasn't ready for that. I was about to eat a cracker. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's a great question. And so, look, there's tools. I'm going to say there's two schools of thought. Mm-hmm. You're going to be hard pressed to find a club that doesn't have a newbies night once a month, probably. Uh, OSS does it. Uh, the I know the Couples Club in, in Sydney also does a newbies night. When we were in Perth, um, mm-hmm. Pleasure, Pleasure Lounge. Lounge. Pleasure Lounge had one. I saw it on their website. So look, you're going to be hard pressed to find a club that doesn't have an, a newbie's night. The benefit of newbie night, you're not the only newbie. Yeah. The detriment of newbie night, you might be surrounded by nothing but newbies. And uh, you know, I'm going to quote uh, C and D from Swinging Down Under on this, where sometimes you want a Yoda couple. Sometimes you want a couple who's a little more experienced to sort of hold your hand. Um, sometimes you want a you and me, an atoms. <laughs> so the that's the benefit of newbies night. Yeah. But then you have the non newbies nights, which are typically or can be a little more busy. Yeah. And that's the thing too. If if there's a theme party going on that night, it's likely to be busier. And versus a non theme night. And that's a generalization. It doesn't always hold true. Um, but if you want to go on a night that's maybe not as busy as some of the others, if you don't want to be just like inundated with heaps of people all around, then maybe try and pick a, a night that's not a theme night. Um, maybe a Thursday or some places may be open on a Sunday might be a good way to kind of dip your toe in and see the environment. Um, again, non-theme nights. If you want that full on, I just want to be surrounded by swingers and pe- people and just want to have all the sexiness around me then then go on a busy night go on a theme night a party night you know it's a great way to just kind of jump in the deep end which is what we tend to do so yeah we we just grab our nose and jump in um i gotta be honest if i'm gonna give advice and say look this is what i would advise you do i would say go on a non newbie night that's that's just me I love the the newbie nights. Um, for us, I like them because I do like to talk to new people and and try to, you know, figure out why they're into the why they're here, what they're hoping to get. I like that kind of interaction. Um, as a as a Zen swinging master, ooh, I should write a book called the the Zen of swinging. Um, if only I'd written that like twenty years ago. So, uh, you know, I like to talk to people and figure out why they why they're here, but. I think if I was new again, Mm -hmm. that I would want to go on a night that was some sort of theme. Right. The themes are fun uh, because they get you, it kind of, 
gets you out of your normal persona and environment as well and so if you go on like a masquerade night well there you you know you have your masks and you can dress up a little if you want to and it, it kind of adds a little extra spice to the night and makes it that extra bit special as your first night same thing with the glow party you know that those are great ones to introduce inter, get introduced to people because i mean you get to paint people i mean come on that's which How is much fun. which you and you're you're kind of already going into that what i my question then was all right so you've decided you might not go on a newbie night yeah let's look talk about themes and and, yeah. and, and things like that and i agree with you 100 percent um if they do a glow party and i think a, i think that's a pretty common yeah. party uh in this in the community glow parties are a blast i mean being able to paint on somebody that's a perfect icebreaker uh if you've got a tattoo people are going to want to fill in your tattoo they're going to want to paint over your tattoo because not everybody's an artist but everybody can color in the lines mostly some of us have (laughs) issues with that still you know and so whether you're using your fingers or or a paintbrush it's not bad to do that and it's fun to do and glow party is a it's a it's it's almost an automatic icebreaker Mm -hmm. so that would be that would be my favorite party to go to. Um, there are plenty of other parties, though. Masquerade is another very common one. You go yeah. in wearing some sort of mask over your eyes. It's a little more incognito. Um, i got to be honest. Masquerade is not one of my favorites. But that's just me. I like it. Do you? Yeah. yeah. I think I think of that dumb movie with Tom Hanks. Um, I can hear people on their listening to the podcast right now screaming at me because it's the stupid swinging movie where tom hanks is looking for his wife in france and oh well nope no idea everybody's gonna just have to scream at me for a while um i'm gonna say i probably haven't seen it uh you probably haven't because number one tom hanks movies are bad Um, (laughs) and number two well tom hanks movies are traditionally bad um i'm sorry not tom hanks god damn it more people are scared are, are screaming at me. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and I apologize for that. Uh, number one, I apologize to Tom Hanks. Well, I don't love all of his movies. His movies aren't shit. I met Tom Cruise. Everything that he touches and does is shit, except for his ex-wife, who was a lovely lady. Um, but the movie I was referring to was Eyes Wide Shut. Oh, yeah. yeah. Had had to take a break, look it up, and then I realized I was saying Tom Hanks, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm a monster. Um, Tom Hanks is the American darling. Tom Cruise is a short little troll. Anyway. I I haven't seen that one. Eyes Wide Shut. Horrible movie. But that's always what I think of when masquerade parties. Mm -hmm. I think of Eyes Wide Shut, and I'm like, ugh. Anyway. We We need to watch it, but we need to watch it with, like, something we can throw at the television that won't hurt the television. Popcorn, maybe. I don't know. Kleenex. (laughs) It's bad. Um... Yeah, dirty cum soaked Kleenex. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Um, so yeah, so I, I would pick a party, pick a theme, something that that you kind of like, and be like, oh, I want to do that, and then and then go for it. Mm. All right, so. So you get to the club. First of all, before you get there, research if they're BYO or not. Oh, that's important. In Australia, they are. So keep that in mind. I don't know about necessarily overseas. It could be mixed. So definitely research whether it is BYO or if they serve alcohol, if you're interested in such. Yes. Which um, most people are. So. And look, there's nothing wrong with getting a little bit of liquid courage before you go to the club. Mm-hmm. But for the love of all that's holy, don't come drunk. No. Recently, like recently, oh recently, my God. we have run into people who are right at that cusp of fucking wasted and when they arrive when they arrive when they walk into the club they're nearly fucking wasted um look it that's not good for anybody you're nobody's gonna like you and you want people to like you and if you if you show up and you're so drunk you can't either stop talking about the bachelor um or walk straight or walk straight or you fall down the stairs or etc 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 um you're you're gonna be more of a liability <laughs> to the and club probably, and your partner than anything else. And you're probably not gonna have as good a time as you could otherwise either. And if you need to drink so much that you don't remember what you did the night before, then you're not you're already starting off poorly. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. We often will have a drink before we end up at the club. Oh yeah. And when we're at the club, we often will have a drink or two or three. Mm-hmm. But 
you know, we don't get so wasted that we don't remember. I can, I've never not remembered going to the club. Yeah. So that's my advice. Don't fucking drink that much. That's, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm now going back to uh, Thursday night in which we were at, at OSS and this young lady, um, I, well, I live tweeted about it, but if you don't follow us on Twitter, she was um, drunk and obnoxious, mm-hmm. and um, she cornered Mrs. Adam because she was really into her, um, and I'm pretty sure she wanted to do really nasty things to you, um, like tell you about how she doesn't know what her blood type is. I mean, she watches Grey's Anatomy, but she's really embarrassed because she doesn't know what her blood type is, mm-hmm. because those things aren't mutually exclusive, um, or how... And I, I like how I think you said something to the effect of, under your breath, uh, she should be embarrassed that she watches Grey's Anatomy, <laughs> which I thought was <laughs> great. Um, you know, or, or she proceeded to talk about how amazing of a television show The Bachelor was. Yeah. She, that girl cleared out a hot tub. She did clear out a na- hot tub. There was five naked people in that hot tub. One of them was male. Mm-hmm. And when we all left, there were two naked people in that hot tub. And they were both ladies talking about the fucking bachelor. So yeah. don't do that. Nobody wants that. <laughs> that was bad. Yeah, it was. Int- it, so at first, it was clear that she was very drunk, and and it, you know, she was just kind of rambling and going on and on, and and people would kind of come and go from the area where we were sitting. So I was like, okay, you know, I'm definitely not interested in playing with her. But at the same time, if it kind of keeps her sequestered here. To where then she's not bothering people in other parts of the club. That's that's okay. We can do this. Look at you taking one for but, the colonial team. But then she went up to the hot tub, and there were several people that went up there, I guess, around that time. And we gave them a few minutes, and then we thought because there were, I mean, come on, there were, what, four women in the hot tub and one guy? Yeah. So we were like, okay, there's probably going to be some making out going on. This could be kind of hot. Let's go see what's going on. So we wandered up there, and... It was not near that exciting, and then when all the Bachelor talk started happening, we promptly left to go downstairs, followed by the male, followed by another female. <laughs> it was great. It was great. I mean, it was horrible, but it was great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, good times. Um, so, look, don't do what Debbie don't does uh, is the is the rule. <laughs> um, and just... Use common sense. Use common sense. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have to say the things like that because common sense is not nearly as common as it should be. Um, so that would be my first advice. Right. And so when you get to the club, um, I'm going to say every club out there either does this or should do this, but everyone we've been to mostly does. But when you get there, they, sh- they should give you a tour of the place. So usually there will be a hostess, host or hostess that will greet you, and you know there may be lockers around They'll give you a locker key, show you where the lockers are, and then you'll get a tour of the place. And definitely make sure that that happens. If they don't offer it, ask for a tour because it's always good to know where everything is to make sure that, you know, if there's a room or something that you're particularly interested in or you don't know that you're interested in it yet, you may wander over there, you know, like the the voyeur room at at OSS. Yeah. If you don't know that that's even an option, then you may completely miss that. Yeah. And so it's good to to be able to have that tour to know what is available as far as rooms and spaces and toys, whatever may be there, but also to know what some of the rules are. You know, where can you have drinks? Where can you not have drinks? Where can you smoke? Where can you not smoke? Um, you know, what doors can be closed? What are private areas? What are not private areas? You know, some of the, and and every club may have slightly different rules. So make sure that when you get there, that you do get a tour and that you get some of the basic rules from the staff. I agree completely. Um, Yeah, it's, and that's something that we've, we've been to clubs before. And I think people assume that since we have been to other clubs before, we don't need a tour. And that's never the case. You always want a tour. Yeah. Um, I want to see what you, because when you're giving a tour, you may show me something that, like you said, I might have never noticed. Right. Or might not have ever realized. And the last thing I want to do is to do some sort of faux pas that I shouldn't be doing um, because I can, I'm can. i allowed to do it in other clubs, but I can't do it in your club. So uh, I think Very that's true. important. Yeah. So you're in the club. You've had your tour. Should Still... we talk about what to wear? Ooh, that's a great idea. Yeah. What should you wear? 
<laughs> so I would say going in to the club, wear something that makes you feel sexy, whatever that may be. Uh, generally, steer clear of jeans and t-shirts. Most oh, places yes. won't let you in in jeans and t-shirts. Uh, so for guys, nice pants, button-up, polo, you know, as much or as little as you want, but just feel sexy in whatever you're wearing. Um, if you want to put on a tie or a bow tie, go for it. Add a little personality. Um, for ladies, I would generally say a sexy dress or a skirt and top, something like that. If you have a nice pantsuit, that would be acceptable as well. But just look nice. You know, it's, it's as if you're going out for a sexy dinner date. I would Think agree with like that. that. Pantsuit, um, I'm not. I'm not a big not fan, but some people suit. are, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say no on the pants unless they're palazzo pants. Palazzo pants. Well, maybe. that's what I was thinking more. So. Okay, I thought you meant like a Hillary Clinton style pants. Oh no no no, that's like a work pants That's not a sexy town pants <laughs> You gotta be clear on this, because <laughs> like, I'm already expecting Hillary now to show up at, <laughs> at the club, and I'm like, I don't like your pinstripe pants suit. I'm sorry. No. no, um, no. Yes, I agree. I'm thinking like a tall, leggy blonde with a palazzo pantsuit. Okay, palazzo pants, yeah. definitely. Oh, sploosh. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, so that's what I would suggest going there. But, um, you know, most clubs will have, you can dress down at various times or areas. And some clubs do require you to dress down at yeah. a certain time. Just be cognizant of that when you get there. Yeah, so make sure to take some sexy lingerie or have a nice brawn panty set at the very least um, that you can dress down into. Guys, make sure you have decent underwear. Oh, um, yeah, don't do, don't wear those ratty old yeah. ones. There, I know you're. I'm. Look, I know they're your favorites, and I've got those too. But don't wear them to the club. Yeah. So wear, your your pants should have four holes in them. Your your underwear should have four holes in them. One for your leg. Yeah, one okay. for your other leg. One for your waist, and then that little hidden one that's so that nobody actually uses it, but somehow your pee pee is supposed to come out of it. <laughs> I don't understand why it's there, but it's there. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Me and podcast people inside the microphone were having a private little chat there. Okay. Yeah. Um, ooh, so you, you you spurred on something that going back just a quick step. Um, what time should you show up? So mm -hmm. people are of two minds of this as well. Uh, and when I say people, I say me. Uh, so you could be there early. If you're there early, you're going to get sort of the lay of the club. Mm -hmm. You're going to understand where everything is, and then you're going to be receiving people. Not in the sexy way, but in the greeting way. So as other people come in, you're already going to be seated seated and comfortable and have your cocktail in hand or your wine or your water or whatever in hand. And as people come in, you're going to be able to talk to them. The benefit of, of that is that as people come in, you can you are already sort of in that position of power mm -hmm. by being seated and already calm and cool and collected, you've got a bit of a upper hand on anybody who comes into your space. Mm -hmm. uh, once, the second once the second couple comes into the club, it's likely they'll sit near you, you guys can start a conversation. Now you guys definitely have a, a more comforting power because there's safety in numbers. Any other couples that come in, you it's your job, and I'm gonna say it's your job, to invite them into the conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, people are going to come up and they're going to look at you and they're going to feel awkward because you two, you know, two couples are already talking. They don't want to interrupt. Invite them in. Have, you know, you're you're better spreading yourself out and, and getting, um, starting a lot of conversations with a lot of different people than maybe pigeonholing yourself in with one couple that you may actually not be interested in. You're only starting your conversation to be polite. Mm -hmm. So the more the merrier. Yeah. And if you decide that you don't want to do that, if you would rather walk into a crowd, you'd rather it be busy when you get there, then go a little bit later. Um, but being your first time, like Mr. Adam said, you might be, it can be scary to be the, the extra couple walking up into a group that's already established, quote unquote. And so if that is the case, if you do get there a bit later and there's already groups of people that are talking and hanging out, whatever, don't be afraid, don't be shy to go up and say, hi, you know, just introduce yourself. My name is, you know, what? yeah. Or like, do you Aww. mind if I sit here and join you? I'm not even going to acknowledge that now. Uh, but yeah, do you <laughs> mind if I join you? Can I, you know, just even compliment something that they're wearing, anything to start that conversation and try to break into the group. I agree. Um, but that's why it is a little bit easier to get there early if it's your first time, I would say. I agree. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Um, I think it takes a, a very confident, brazen 
person to be able to walk up to a group of people who are already in a conversation and go, hello, you know, and not, we're kind of like that. We're, we're not shy about walking up, but I can understand that it's not, Mm -hmm. um, it's not simple. Yeah. Okay. So one of the other common questions that we get about what to wear at the club, especially from women. And I heard it just the last night. Do I keep my shoes on or not? That's and, a good question. Yeah, and I would generally say, um, and especially this came from a lady in very high heels. <laughs> Stiletto heels. Yeah, and I mean, I told her, I was like, look, if you if you want to, it's, it's definitely sexy, you know, for sure. And especially if you're still at the point in the evening that you're wearing your dress and your nice clothes, then you might want to keep them on because it does kind of complete the look. But at the same time, if you're comfortable taking them off and walking around barefoot or in your stocking hose, then then feel free, you know, and, and that's what I told her. And I think she was dressing down at that point. So once you're dressing down, it's a little bit easier to take your shoes off and feel comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, but there is no right or wrong with that. I would say generally, you know, nice shoes are nice shoes and we want to see them. But if you're not comfortable in it and you're not going to be happy wearing them, take them off. And number one, don't wear uncomfortable shoes, people. This is just a... This is just a general side life note. Like <laughs> life is, your feet are important. Love them. Take care of them. Do not wear uncomfortable shoes. Anyway. <laughs> they don't have to be like pillows on your feet, but they don't, like. I, I like pillows on my feet. I know, but they don't have to be. <laughs> um, and, and we've seen couples, or we've seen ladies especially, um, who will dress down and then still wear their high heels. Yeah. Um, we've seen people who walk in and immediately take off their high heels and yep. are still fully clothed. Yep. So the answer is there is no real answer. It's whatever works for you. That's yeah. that's what that's the important thing. And same thing for guys. Yes. Um, I will say only once have I seen a couple come into the club, um, and I'm sure it happened before, but where they – had a pair of uh, flip flops or thongs, oh, yeah. sandals, yeah. so that once they dressed down, they were still wearing something on their feet. And while I get the fear of athlete's foot and other uh, fungal growths on your feet, part of me wants to be like, oh, that's that's to me the end, not sexy, but that's just me. Yeah. Anyway, I tend to agree. Um, so you're in the club. How do you? What you're, you're like, okay, you're in the club. You're talking to people. You're yeah. actually talking to people. I was going to say, how are you talking to people? But let's say we're, we're in a conversation with some folks, and we're like, oh, my God, I really like these people. Yeah. How do I get them? We're going to use the word upstairs, meaning to, to a playroom. To a playroom. Yeah. And it's wherever the playroom is, but at OSS, they're all upstairs. And I sort of like the idea of how do I get you upstairs? So how do you get them upstairs? Um, I'm literally asking you. You mean me personally? <laughs> I know how you do it, and that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> so I just ask them, hey, do you want to go play? Or do you want to see if there's a space open where, you know? Yeah. Do you want to see my open space? <laughs> I don't say that. But I, I do. I just, I mean, it's, you know, it, the worst they can say is no. And then and then we're no worse off. We haven't lost anything. Um, to give advice based on things that we've experienced we have heard the phrase, we're going upstairs to play. Yes. That is a frightening proposal to somebody who you say it to. Because when I hear that, that means I'm not, what, what I hear is we're not really interested, but we're going to go and play. Right. Um, because then that puts the impetus on the other couple to say, may we join you? And that's not a... It's a very passive-aggressive way to try and invite someone upstairs. And depending on who they are, they could take it as, we're not interested in you, but we still want to play, so we're going to go play. Bye-bye. Or it could be, oh, we're going to go play, and we kind of want you to join us, but we're not going to actually ask you directly and hope that you get the hint. Which you probably won't. And I'm very thick scold, so I don't get that hint No, you never get those hints. No. No, you have to be forthright with me. I have literally heard you say, okay, bye-bye, <laughs> <laughs> to people. And then you, then I can look at them, like, because, like, you go back to the conversation. <laughs> and you look at this couple, and suddenly I'm like, oh, my God, they wanted us to join them. And you've already been like, okay, bye-bye. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. So it. that's why I suggest just being honest and 
And it might be difficult, especially if it's your first time or hell, your 10th time. It doesn't matter. It can still be difficult to say to a couple, you know, basically what you're saying is I'm interested in you and I would like to have a further relationship with you. But all you really have to say is, you know, do you want to join us upstairs? Or do you, let's, you know, we're going to go see if there's a space to play. Do you want to join us? Or, you know, anything like that. Yeah, if, if, and if that's it, like, all you have to say is, hey, we're going to go upstairs and play. Want to come? Yeah. Are you interested? I mean, yeah. it's it's not a lot more effort. And that still gives the, the other couple an out to say, oh, not yet, or oh, maybe later, or oh, whatever. Yeah, and if you know that they, depending on what kind of conversation you've had with them, if you know that maybe like the, the couple the other night where they're just exhibitionists and voyeurs, you can say, we're going to go upstairs and play. Do you want to come watch us? Yeah. You know? I mean, it can be even as simple as that. Yeah. And that way there's no impetus to be like, you know, hey, we want to have sex with you, but just even, hey, do you want to come watch? Yeah. You know? Yeah, completely agree. Um, so don't be shy, I yeah. guess, is, is yeah. the, look, we're all, we're all at the club for the same reason. But at the same time, don't be super offended if the people say no, mm. um, no matter what no looks like. Uh, you know, one of the rules of the clubs is is consent is king. And I know we've said this before, but it's one of those things that, you know, you ask somebody before you do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they say no, you absolutely respect it. No mm-hmm. is, that's that's stone, um, permanent ink. Now that, you know, if they decide later that they do want you to do something or to play or whatever, they can. Mm-hmm. That can change. But it goes both ways. Um, you don't pressure people. And that's interesting that you mentioned changing because we've had, I know there's been an instance for us at the club where we had just basically just gotten there, hadn't been there long, and somebody asked us to go play, but we weren't quite settled in yet. And right. so we said, you know, not right now, but maybe later. And then later we did end up playing with them. Yeah. But it was that, you know, we we just got here. We're not really kind of fully in the groove yet, you know, I like give us a little bit of time, and then. And we'll for get the there. record, it wasn't even a let's see if we can find a better offer. No. And that, that wasn't what it was. No. It was literally we just got here. We yeah. need a few minutes to sort of settle in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you all right? So you've you've got your you've got your play friends. You found a place to play. Mm-hmm. Um, Make sure that you learned on the tour where condoms and lube are. Good point. Um, so you yes, and then have a have a bit of a conversation if you haven't already as to what their play style is. Mm-hmm. Do they do? Are they full swap? Are they soft swap? And for anybody who doesn't know what that means, I'm going to use this sort of typical blanket definition, which is soft swap is typically um, partners will kiss other partners and oral play have you know manual stimulation and oral stimulation for other partners, whereas full swap is Typically, um, penis and vagina, uh, or penis and anus play. Mm-hmm. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so, figure out what what their rules are. And also, um, especially for those of us who sit on the the bisexual scale. Uh, have a conversation with them as to, you know, is female-female play acceptable, male-male? If so, how much are you yeah. comfortable with? But just, it doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out conversation. No. It can be a two-minute... Are you okay with? Yeah, yeah. You know, what are your limits? Are you okay with this? Or maybe it can even be, I like to do X. Is that acceptable for you? Yeah. And yeah, But just make sure you have some boundaries along the way. And and make sure that everybody's also comfortable with you know, if, if it goes too far, if you're not, if you don't like what I'm doing, say no. So, yeah. You know, it's okay. And it's, it may, and I would hope that whoever you've, you've spoken to and how now have taken upstairs, that you've had that conversation where you're comfortable with saying, actually, I'm not comfortable with this. Yeah. Um, if whoever you take into a room, you aren't comfortable saying, I'm not comfortable with something, you've taken the wrong people to the room. Um, that, that would be, I would say that flat. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to be able to say no to whoever you're taking um, with you, bringing with you. So that's that's very important. Yeah. So you, another thing I would say, and this is borrowed from um, another podcast, Keeping Up with the Joneses, um, take a mental picture. 
Take yeah. a moment. I, I love that. And it's something I know we've said it before in the podcast. Um, and I hope we've always credited them. But and I don't know if, if they've gotten it from somewhere. But I love that concept of, you know, mid play, you kind of stop, you look around and you go, holy shit balls. Click. Take a snapshot. Yeah, take a snapshot. Yeah. For further review, this is my favorite moment of the night. And mm-hmm. that's so important. And it's easy to get... Enjoy it. It's supposed to be fucking yeah. fun, people. And it's easy to get caught up in the moment and what you're doing. And it can... You know, sometimes it is nice to just take a look around and see what else is happening in the room. Particularly if it is like the orgy room where there can be... You know, you may be playing with a couple or a couple couples, but there can still be other people in the room. Yeah. And it can be kind of exciting to look up and see how many other people there are, what else they're doing, even if it's just you and your partner and another couple. Yeah. If you've switched partners even, then, you know, you may not be paying attention to what your partner's doing. But look over there and be like, hey, that's really hot, you know? I agree. Yeah. And so I think that snapshot moment is is really good. It's really good. Yeah. Um, and we'll bring that back here uh, on the ride home. But, um, yeah, that's I think that's – enjoy it. It's, yeah. it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be enjoyable. Um, if it's not – Don't stress about it. Yeah. If it's not fun or enjoyable, I'm not going to say you're doing it wrong, but you need to stop doing it. Um, you need to sort of reassess. Take a step back. Take a step back. Yeah. Go with your partner. There's no shame in saying, hey, we need to talk for a bit. Yeah. Um, you know, we've had couples play with us, and that's what they've said. We're, we're getting really intense, moving, you know, quickly. And then they say, Ooh, we need to take a minute, and, and can we go have a conversation? Yeah. And we're like, yeah, absolutely, because that's... We'll, then we'll just play together. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's like um, there's nothing wrong with that. And I think a lot of people get embarrassed by that. Yeah. They think that they just need to kind of go with it and, and take one for the team kind of thing. And... That's not, that comes through. You can tell when when somebody isn't really interested in you and they're playing with you just because they feel they have to. And that's not good and for that's anyone. that's not fun for anyone. No. no. Um, it's kind of insulting. Um, so don't do that. So yeah. uh, another thing that I would highly encourage, I'm going to assume play is done. Um, f- for fuck's sake, don't take your condom off and throw it on the floor, on the bed, or no, stick don't. it on the pillow. Yeah, please don't um, do that. What the fuck is wrong with you? Were you raised in a barn? I wish I had a taser and could tase you. There are nine times out of ten, there are uh, garbage cans, garbage bins in, in the rooms, in the playrooms. Put your condom they're, in there. They're not there just to look pretty. No, they have a purpose. And then you want to give them and let them do their purpose. They have a job. Um, yeah, for fuck's sake. And don't throw them in the toilet. What is wrong no. with people? Um, that's bad for the plumbing. Do not do that. You know you know that that's how condom monsters come out. And I'm pretty sure that <laughs> there was, I saw a movie about one in like a B movie, Godzilla versus the condom, condom monster. Condom monster? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Anyway. Um Yes. Yeah. Just, just generally. He was attacked by a group of semen. Oh, terrible! Terrible. <laughs> God. <coughs> oh my God! I'm hilarious. No. <clears throat> anyway. Um. Yeah. I would say generally, just make sure that when you leave the area, it's reasonably clean. Because yes. people are going to come in to play behind you. Just, just make sure it's decent. That's all you have to do. Yeah. It's not hard. No. Throw your condoms away. If there are any tissues, anything, throw them away. So the next thing I'm going to give advice on is you've, you've left the playroom. You've gone back down to a social room. And this is, again, personal preference. Do not just go straight to the locker room, get dressed, and go straight home. <laughs> because nothing makes you feel like <laughs> shit than playing with a couple and then they just leave. They just disappear. They just disappear. Yeah. They're gone. You're like... Wow. Okay. W- was okay. I that bad? Yeah. <laughs> were Were we that I bad? Fu- I fucking run. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, have some courtesy. Uh, have some decency. Uh, at least have a little bit of a conversation. Have after. a glass of water. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Everyone needs hydration. Yeah. Um, go have a glass of water. I'm five minutes. That's all it takes. Is five minutes to say, "Wow, that was great," um, and don't know if I should say this, but I'm I'll just say it. gonna say it. Even if it wasn't great, say that was great. Uh, you know, look, <laughs> she she just puts her head in her hands. No, 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 no I agree. Oh, okay. No, I um, yeah. I mean, look, at that point, you're not gonna hurt anything. You're. It's too late to give critiques. It's too late <coughs> to to change anything that's happened. Mm-hmm. You know. 
You're not in a forever relationship. You're not in people. a forever relationship. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's, yeah, it's 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 just. At least just say it was enjoyable, had a good time. Yeah, you something. don't have to say it yeah. was great. Yeah. yeah, you can say it was enjoyable. Thank you is a wonderful yeah. thing you can say to somebody because they've given you something, um, either themselves or them, their partners. Mm -hmm. um, that's a, a nice thing to say. Yeah. Um, so yes, be polite. Yes. You don't have to lie. Just be polite. Um, definitely get yourself some water. Phrasing. Phrasing is important. <laughs> Indeed. I thought you were doing an archer bit. No. <laughs> like phrasing. I'm like, you don't have to lie. How is that? No, you don't are we not to, doing... You don't have to lie. It's just how you phrase it. Are we, are we, not, are we seriously not doing phrasing? <laughs> <laughs> Rimshot. Um, yeah, so just, yeah, be polite. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have now... Um, we're getting ready, probably go getting ready to go home. We might be ready for another play. Okay, we might be ready for another play. You never know. Yeah. We've done that before. Sometimes it's fun to ebb and flow into the playrooms and back into the social areas yeah. to sort of draw out that sexual excitement. Mm -hmm. um, but let's assume that we're it's time to go. Closing time. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Yeah. You you get dressed. Um, when you leave, thank the staff. Mm-hmm. Again, I feel like they've this... been working hard to clean up after you, serve you drinks. Yes, yeah. they're cleaning up your sheets, your dirty, cum soaked, squirted on sheets, and towels, and towels. Um, yeah, just show them some courtesy yeah. and decency. Uh, they are, it's this place is not a hotel, oh. um, so they, you know, they do have to clean up after you, but. Hell, you shouldn't leave a hotel a mess either. But I mean, just just don't. You weren't raised in a barn, or if, clearly, yeah. if you in in Australia, you weren't raised in a tent. Use common courtesy. Use common courtesy, yeah. and treat the place the way you would want people to treat your house. Yeah. That's. I feel kind of stupid actually saying this, but I know it has to be said because I've yeah. seen how people are. Yeah. Um, you're better than this microphone, people. Listen to me. And the other thing too, as with any late night place, when you leave, leave quietly. Oh. Good because point. you you know depending on where it is some are in warehouse districts there's no real neighbors some are in the middle of the city some are in neighborhoods you never know so just leave quietly don't be screaming and yelling all over the place and whatever yeah because you don't want the council or the neighborhood or whatever to then close the place down because and then you can never just assholes yeah. leave and are screaming Woo! yeah 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 <laughs> airtight bitches <laughs> 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 oh my god sorry okay, I, I kind of want to scream that now leaving the club I know I, I, I can see <laughs> Lawrence would love that Lawrence would be like I don't care if I can do it <laughs> um, <laughs> he'd probably be happier if he screamed that leaving his apartment though <laughs> um, yeah so you're in the car ride home you're in the bus ca taxi whatever um this again, another time to communicate and mm -hmm. so I, I think we may have skipped we sort of glossed over communication at the club but the the key to a successful first club experience is communication throughout the entire process yeah. the, the 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 pre the during and the post talk about those snapshots those you you each took a, a moment to look around and you're like this is my favorite moment of the night talk about it why is it your favorite moment of the night mm -hmm. what what happened there that really either A, turned you on, or B, did it for you, or, you know, what what was it about that experience that you were like, holy shitballs, I want to do this again? Yeah. Um, and conversely, there's nothing wrong with taking a snapshot as well um, that is, I didn't like this, and, you know, this yep. is a snapshot we're going to throw away because we don't want to remember that one, but, you know... Talk about it with your partner. But it's good to know if something did happen that you really, really didn't like, to talk about it with your partner and not put yourself in that situation again. Yeah. So it is good to acknowledge it and to make sure that they're aware as well. And they may have had the same bad experience. Yeah. So. Um, you know, if your partner has done something that during the night that you're like, I wish you hadn't done that. Um, I'm one that I want to hear about it now. 
Yeah. If I did something that... Because otherwise it's going to fester. Yeah, because then, yeah. you know, if we wait till tomorrow to talk about it, <clears throat> I'll have completely forgot what I've done. And when you And bring I will it up, have been resentful all night long. Yes. And, yeah. and then when we talk about it tomorrow, you're going to attack me and I'm going <clears> to <throat> get completely defensive. Now, I might still get defensive tonight when it mm-hmm. right after it's happened but you know it's all about you know what you really i think is key to remember is that especially if it's a first time you know the first time to the club this is both of y'all's first time yeah so when we when we talk about the good parts and the bad parts we need to be a little understanding and accepting of i didn't realize that that I did that or I'm sorry I did that or don't immediately shut down and not communicate about it all of a sudden. Or it could even be I didn't realize that was so important to you. you exactly. Because, you know, we all kind of pick up on different things and something that's important to me may not be important to you. And so it could have been a little thing in your mind, but in my mind it was a big thing. Yeah. And so it's is it's very important to, to communicate that to your partner and to express to them how important it is so that they can keep an eye out next time. And again, in a non-judgmental, yeah. non-attacking, yeah. non-confronting way, you, there there are ways you can do this. Um, that is one sort of side note to maybe pushing it off till tomorrow. Mm-hmm. If you have drank too much, do not get into a negative conversation. And if you're overly emotional and yeah. all that, yeah, don't do that. Um, yeah. Then wait till you're both clear-headed, and then have a rational conversation over brunch the next morning. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we will constantly talk about when we leave the club. You know. The cab ride home, those poor cabbies, um, <laughs> are are often filled with, you know, our discussions of the night. Yeah. And then we'll talk about it the next day during breakfast or lunch or whatnot and try to figure out, you know, like, oh, what worked, what didn't work, what we'd like, what we didn't like. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a great plan. Yeah. And the other thing, too, that we like to do um, is either that night when we get home or that morning, I guess, when we <laughs> get home. Or, All too often. Or whenever you wake up later that morning uh but one of the two we like to have what we call take back sex yes and so it is that time that we reconnect with each other you know nobody else is there it's just us and it, it's just reclaiming in, in a, the most primitive way reclaiming your territory yeah you know like you're now mine again and you know until like a few hours from now but you know <laughs> <laughs> whatever you're mine for now um but it is that that take back sex and it, it, it is that reconnection with your partner and you're letting them know that they are still your world you know just because you may have played with someone else doesn't mean you're going to toss them to the side yeah and that, I, I agree completely i think that's extremely important yeah yeah any final thoughts on um, first-time club advice experience? No. Uh, the only other thing I would add is, you know, besides discussing, of course, after the fact with your partner, is if it worked well or if it wasn't like a complete and absolute horrible disaster, <laughs> set a date to do it again. Yeah. Like at that moment, say, okay, we liked this enough. We're going to try it again. Let's go ahead and set a date. And it could be a month from now or two months depending on your schedule. It doesn't have to be the very next weekend. Um, but, you know, go ahead and put it on the calendar to do it. And if it was an absolute horrible disaster, figure out why, if it can be resolved, and if you should try it again. Yeah. And it could even be a year later. I mean, we've seen that where people had an experience, and it may not have gone well, and it was a very long time, but they did come back later. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, there are people out there that the club life is just not for them. Yeah. That is not yep. the, the way. You know, they, they are open relationship, they're swingers, whatever, but... Club is it's not, not for them. It's not for them. Yeah. So don't think that there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Um, this is not the only way to do no. it. No. Yeah. Uh, or look for another club. Yeah. Find a club. You know, I didn't like the clientele at this club. Well, what tends to end up happening is most clubs will have a clientele that are the type of folk that go there. So either wait for another party, don't go to the same party, or yeah. you know, give it another shot. That I guess that's the whole big thing. Not necessarily that specific club, but the club experience. Yeah. Because um, we've talked to a number of couples, <clears throat> excuse me, we've talked to a number of couples where their first club experience was horrific, but we've met them on their second club experience they're trying to treat it as if it was their first club experience, mm-hmm. and it was great. They really enjoyed it. They were like, oh, my God, this is so much fun. Mm-hmm. So just remember that, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts to this yeah. lifestyle. Well, and it's interesting when you say that because our first club experience That's a perfect was example. very overwhelming. Yeah. 
And we were just like, holy shit, I don't think this is for us. And it took us four, three, four months to go to it, another I club. I honestly think it was longer than that. And it wasn't another club. It was the same club. I thought we went back to another club first. No. So, well, I, I'm not kind of, I'm saying Australia. Because we went to a different club in the States and, and well, loved yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but that's true. That's our true. Our first club experience was, was Our Secret Spot. Our first club in Australia was Our Secret Spot. And we left and I went, I never want to go to a club again. Yeah. Because I was so overwhelmed. It was very overwhelming. It was a New Year's Eve party. I'm sure we we told it. Because yeah, it was our very we, first one, I it, think. Yeah, it was one of our first, yeah. if not the first podcast. Yeah. And I was fucking over. I need to re-listen to that just to laugh at myself now yeah, because probably. I was like, I'm never going to a club again. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm like, I, I'm at a ticket spot nearly every weekend. Yeah. And it, but you know, it's, you know, it, 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 we do love that environment now. It was just the first time we went. It was confronting. It was very overwhelming because it was so packed. You know what? What? The first time we went, we didn't have a podcast that we could listen to. For people to give That's us advice. That's true, we didn't. So we went without any of this advice. And we didn't get a tour. We didn't get a tour. <laughs> damn it, Lawrence, I blame you. Uh, <laughs> if you're still listening, damn it, Lawrence. I, you know. um, but, you know, that's... That's the perfect there point. Were, there were a lot of things that we're saying should happen that didn't that, happen that That night. we did not do. We yeah. we didn't talk about it before. We did a lot of bad things We did night. a lot of we bad things. We broke every rule that we've already set up in this podcast. <laughs> so there you go. So listen to what we say, not what we do. <laughs> you know, though, arguably, our first, each time we go to a new club, we still follow almost all these rules. Yeah, we do. Um, it's true. Because all these rules aren't applicable necessarily... I'm going to say that it's not just a first-time club experience. These are experiences in general. We we reiterate many of these rules every time we go to a club, every time yeah. we go on a date. Um, yeah. You know, when we go to a new club in, in whatever city we're in. Um, you know, a lot of these things, too, I, I sort of follow when I go to the saunas. Yeah. It's all, it, it, the, the logic is still there. It's, it's all about, look, you will paint your own experience. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And one final thought is when you're going into a club, have a positive attitude. Mm. I think that is more important than almost anything else is have a positive attitude. Because if you go in with a positive attitude, you're going to attract more people to you. You're going to have a better time. Whereas if you're all negative and grr and stomping around, you're not going to have a good time. Nobody's going to want to talk to you. Nobody wants to talk to Captain Frowny Face. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's we've t and we've talked Put to people. Put a smile on your face. We've met people who are like, "Oh, I don't like going to clubs because nobody talks to me." And you're like, "Oh, did you go and talk to anybody?" No. I'm like, oh, well, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Look, you've got to be, you've got to be Put social. A, Put a smile on your face. Yeah. Be positive and be open. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I guess also to <laughs> one final final thought: <laughs> don't answer questions with one word answers. <laughs> If yes. if I ask you where you're from, let's say, that, and that's a bad question to ask, but it's also a question that a lot of people ask. So, oh, where are you from? Sydney. Well, uh, thanks. You gave me nothing. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, so if, if Sydney is your answer, perhaps you should come up with a question to ask me back. <laughs> or expand on it and say, you know, Sydney, but I grew up here, lived here, whatever, something. Sure. It's it's a conversation starter. That's it, what yeah. they're trying. That we're trying to yeah. start a conversation. Yeah. You know, be part of that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, okay. That's basically, in a nutshell, our advice. Basic for advice. Basic advice for first-time club and general life experiences. Mm -hmm. um, do we have a question this week? We do. <gasps> Ooh. And it has, is it apropos? It has to do with a club, but not necessarily like first time. Okay, well, that's fine. maybe I don't know. Anyway, uh, the question is: What are your thoughts and observations on the different dynamic between first sexual interactions in a party slash club environment versus when you have someone at home? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> do we mean first time at home as well? Or? I'm assuming first sexual interactions either in the party or club, or okay. first sexual interactions at home. So the first time you have sex with another couple or, say, person, if you don't do couples, whatever, the first time you have sex with them, either in a club versus at home, what are the dynamics and how are they different between the two? That's a hard question because yeah. I, don't, I don't really know. Um, look. So one thing that I'll say right off the bat is that generally if we – so we – 
that's interesting because I'm going to say that generally if we play with somebody at the club for the first time, more than likely we have had some interactions with them, we've met them, talked with them, may have even met them previously and talked with them, um, but it is going to be on the level of relationship deepness, might be like a 20 or 30%. Okay. Whereas by the time we have someone over to our house, we've probably had a date or two, like intimate date, just them and us. Uh, we've probably had a lot of kit conversations back and forth. And so there's a little more intimacy there. And it might be at like a 40 or 50%. And that's what I was thinking as well. I, what I was going to say is right along that line, which is by the time we've invited somebody into our apartment, it is we have a pretty strong relationship with them. Yeah. So if then we go to the bedroom from there, it is a pretty strong yeah. We're pretty comfortable with them. Whereas in the club experience, we may not be. Because, I'm again, I'm going back to the, the newbies that we played yeah, with. That's um, true, yeah. We had just met them, and we ended up playing with them. And yeah. it was, uh, I mean, it was amazing, but it wasn't really what, it's it's better now that we've had them yeah. over to our place. Um, <laughs> we like you. Uh, so, um, I would say just painting broad strokes mm -hmm. that people that we have over to our apartment that we play with the first time we end up having a much more intimate in depth sort of play time yeah. than yeah. we do in the club experience cuz oftentimes too after we've played and we often lay naked and just chit chat for hours if we're playing at home yeah, yeah. whereas in the club you most you of the time you can't because you might be in the orgy room and there's a million other people in there. You don't want to there. take up the space. Yeah. yeah. Or you don't want to take up the space in the petite room because we're polite. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say that generally if we're playing at the club, it's not always. Because, again, there are people that we've played with there that we've seen over and over again. They're regular play partners here at our apartment, whatever. Um, but generally it is, I would say, a quicker interaction. Because yeah. because we are in a space that, you know, we're there to play, but it's not going to be like a, you know, five-hour session type of thing. Right. Um, whereas at home, we, I think we feel like we can take the time to have a little more of the, the build-up, to have more play. Um, you know, we might even take a break and come back at yeah. some point. Well, we'll oftentimes at home take a break, drink some water, chit-chat, yeah. uh, that ebb and flow of yeah. sexuality. So I would say that's the, the biggest difference in the dynamic between the two is somewhat the depth of relationship, but not always, um, but more so the, the time that we allow for play. Um, because, you know, there's times at the club where, you know, we'll take, I feel like, a good bit of time to play with a couple, and especially depending on where we are and what else is going on. But at the same time, it's, it is a slightly different dynamic than at home. Yeah. And, and maybe it's, I don't know if it's just location because other people are there, the level of comfort. And also one thing that I'll say too, um, just with us both being bisexual, is that when we have a couple over here, there can sometimes be a little more bisexual play than maybe the other couple is comfortable with at the club. Yeah, because and I was actually thinking the exact same thing because oftentimes we'll run into that thing where people are okay being um, heteroflexible or, or bisexual um, in private, but yeah. when they're still in that public club setting, it's a little more, they're a little more concerned about the way they may appear. Maybe perceived. Yeah, perceived. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I got. Awesome. Well, let's wrap this mutter up. Um, so once again, the next uh, well, the next time you can see us is at uh, Sexpo this coming weekend. Um, yeah, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday we will be there. Um, definitely, if you're there, tweet at us, Facebook message us, whatever. We'd love to see you or, or come see our talk at 4 p.m. on Friday, 4 p.m. on Saturday, or 6 p.m. on Sunday. It's the Swinging 101, The Art of Flirting. Those are two separate topics covered in one class, because you know. It'll be like a taster, taster. Yeah, it's a taster, taster yeah. class. <laughs> um, so, or come see us at the uh, blowjob and cock massage on November twenty fourth, and please, please, please stay for the pendulum party part yes. four. Um, that's in November as well, and then we mm -hmm. may have something come up in December. We'll talk to you about that maybe next week. We'll. Uh, I'm just teasing You're right now. You're gonna build suspense, aren't yeah. you? Teasing. Yeah. It's not Antisa. quite, it's not, 
pay for Say it! it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it won't be quite Christmas. It won't be quite December. But it'll definitely be a night to remember. Ooh. See, I made a poem. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, yeah, we'll uh, talk to you all later. Thanks. <laughs>